was really important in making this film to experience the place first primarily and then bring out the equipment and not have the equipment be this veil to our experience. Time being there, helping out in the community, experiencing the harvesting ourselves, experiencing the place and the rhythms of that place uh, was much greater than actual filming. The Haida language is moribund, it's nearly extinct. There are between 30 and 40 speakers and they, they average the age of 80. Language, when you, when you start to consider how it's valuable, it touches everything. On some level, it's like Wade Davis says, it's uh, language is like the canary in the coal mine of, of, of culture. It's also the guide to culture. It's like it, it, it tells us what to focus on. And so when we lose a language, we're losing um, uh, a very unique worldview. Um, Nani is telling her story in such a beautiful way. When she forgot the word, it was a moment that I didn't fully grasp at the time when it happened. And coming back and really reflecting on it made me realize that it kind of brings down to reality and invites the audience to have some empathy for the plight of the language and the language of indigenous people all over the world. It's kind of like a map for a semantic landscape, and that landscape holds cultural nuances, and it's rooted in place, and for a civilization like lives on Haida Gwaii that is so old, who has place names for every inlet and every mountain and river, to lose a language like this, you're losing parts of that semantic landscape, that cultural landscape. One of the kids, he said, why is it so important for you, for you to teach the language? So I told this boy, I said, you know what? We're not the only ones that lost our language. There's all over the world. They, we, they have different languages. Everyone has their own, and we do too. And we have to have ours back because we're all hideous. <laughs> <laughs> 